Hi, Mini.Ra here. I'll be the voice presenter for this video. In this video, I'll show you all how to build this super simple moss or bone meal farm. It can get you multiple chests of moss and other shrubberies or bone meal an hour. The rates heavily depend on how you build the farm, more on that later. Timestamps are in the description. There are a lot of benefits to having a moss farm really early on in your game. One of them being that you can turn it into a bone meal farm, which is a valuable resource to have lots of, especially in the early game. Azalea can also be used to get plenty of wood in the early game, especially since you can build bare bones tree farms for this tree type, since you don't have to worry about the breaking of the leaves. Because you can use the large supply of azalea that you get from the moss farm instead of having to recollect all the saplings from a tree, but there's one overlooked feature of moss farms that I really want to clarify, and that's the fact that you can get large amounts of moss blocks crazy fast. Not only are these good for decorations, but they're also excellent scaffolding blocks. They're solid, unflammable, green, and easy to break without a tool, making them the perfect scaffolding block. Anyways, let's talk about the farm. This farm works relatively the same as any other conventional moss farm. A dispenser to dispense bone meal on a stone platform, a system to flush the platform, and stone generators to replenish the stone platform. However, there are some different takes to make this moss farm extra cheap without making it ineffective. One of these things is the bone meal dispenser. Normally people seem to put their bone meal dispenser above the farm which in the case of single moss farms is really strange to me, since having your bone meal dispenser under the farm brings two big benefits. The first thing being that there won't be any obstructive shrubbery above the moss whenever you bone meal it. You'll need to somehow remove it because it'll prevent the moss from being bone mealed again. This all just requires more wiring that can be easily avoided. The second thing being that you won't need a timing circuit. A dispenser won't use bone meal when a moss block is obstructed, which means the flushing water can act like your timing circuit, which will require less wiring. Another thing that has been done a little bit differently is the stone generators. In this farm, they run independently instead of having them controlled by the main circuit, which makes them able to break moss faster than it's generated. Don't worry about it generating cobblestone either. It should never generate cobblestone unless the farm is unloaded when active. This happens because the clock uses a sand block, and when the sand is an entity, it can be unloaded which can mess up the timing. If this happens though, you can simply break the cobblestone. This generator might seem redstone dust heavy, but you can easily modify it to be dustless if you prefer that. Anyways, let's talk about the modularity of this farm. The farm is made out of three parts, the moss generator, the stone generator, and the main clock. I'll be showing you one effective configuration of this farm, however, I highly suggest you shuffle around some parts to create your own. These parts are designed to be super simple, so it shouldn't be too hard. The parts can also be individually edited. One simple way of reducing the amount of redstone dust is by switching out the trapdoors with dispensers. It requires a bit of string, but will be a neat upgrade for the farm. Anyways, let's get to building. This concludes the voice part of this video. See y'all next time.